45% of the total population. This is our advantageous position. If we, if we utilize this as group of people to transform from non-skill or poor skill to medium or high skill population, then dramatically change our economic position. Top 10 hosting countries of international migrants. If, if, if we just compare with 2000 and 2015, we have seen that first one was United States and still United States of America is the first hosting migrant countries. Second, Russia and third, Germany in 2000, but Germany now second hosting countries all over the world. And Russia is rising also hosting. Saudi Arabia also from 8 to now it is 4 in ranking for hosting migrant countries. So these top 10 countries will be the our opportunity to migrant people from our country to their hosting country. This is the global scenario of the total population and labor force demand. From the considering this demand and existing condition, in Bangladesh, Directorate of Technical Education takes some initiative based on poverty reduction strategy also common for all SDGs goal and seven five years plan Bangladesh perspective plan, education policy, national skill development policy, and sustainable goal considering. Our government now debate system continuously reform based on the demand driven human capital rather than supply driven. The National Skill Development Policy and NTPQF to Bangladesh Quality Assurance System in Tibet, Tibet Data System considering universal sense, recognition of prior learning because our people make this government product used by developed countries but our labor skill not is not integrated by the developed countries. So considering this RPL already running, competitive system and development, training program or debate teacher and principal, uh, mostly in uh, Nanyang, Singapore and Guangzhou, China. And our government takes effective and flexible institutional management system, access for underprivileged group and labor market information should be the accurate data collection process. Competency based assessment is running in our country based on uh, for qualification, uh, recruitment, education and training need analysis, employee classification, assurance of progress and recognition of prior learning. Our national technical vocational qualification framework is in six levels. Already this structure is available in the BTV website also. Here the level, uh, before level one, there have provision of conformal group of people as pre work one and pre work two. The Tibet institution at a glance in Bangladesh, where we mentioned 7,925 total institutions in Tibet, Bangladesh. And in enrollment, enrollment information in 2016 and 17 about 1 million. And and on one, near about 1.3 million of the 
Under that the ministry, we have about seven, uh, 13 institutions. About uh, all around the world, uh, our island, technical vocational training institutions. And we have, we are that to the Department of Technical Edu Education and Training, like Bangladesh, that is DTE, Department of Technical Education. But we have Department of Technical Education and Training. And the technical education system in Sri Lanka has developed through a period of 110 years, that is very long, and through a system comprising island-wide network of four, uh, 39 colleges. And he will address, has addressed below stages to build the power linkage via programs. We are, I am talking about, we are talking about that three top points, that is the curriculum stage, educational process system, and getting employment opportunities.
being established to support the efforts in enhancing the development of an internationally competitive workforce in Sri Lanka. This is data system and employment support, competency based training, CBT curriculum, and accreditation process provide skills data system for employment support. Department of Technical Education and Training has designed web portal for providing skill training for industry. In other words, Sri Lanka has 39 technical, technical college, 9 college of technologies and 30 technical colleges. Technical colleges and college of technology has career guidance units. Career guidance units always uh, link with industry for getting the job opportunities and providing <laughs> And DTEC, Department of Technical College, always link with the industry and getting job opportunities for technical and education trainees. In summary, uh, Institute Industry Linkage We are concerned three topics. One is the curriculum design is an educational process and job opportunities. All over the covers these topics. Our technical colleges covers these areas with industry linkages. Sometimes, no, not sometimes, always uh, we create an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship uh, training with our career guides unit, career guides unit, always uh, two days and eight days entrepreneurship training of okay, the I give a small summary also then that means according to this topic, the industry, industry is to engage for employers' expectation matching qualifications with occupation. That means always we have to uh, give our curriculum to the our students. According to this three main area, that means curriculum stage, we always gather with the industry people and we prepare the curriculum according to the industry needs. And again, when we are giving them the training, during the training period, students are going to study visits to the industry and they sometimes they uh, understand and our instructors understand that what we are giving the curriculum, what we are studying, giving the curriculum that is not sometimes met with the industry. Then we again, we understand what we have to change. And again, after the training, we put the pay, place the students to the industry for OJ, on the job training and later the jobs. Then again, when we send the students to the, for, on the job training, then again, industry people uh, feedback us. Now, what, what are the, who are the students saying for us is not fulfilled with the, our uh, needs. Then again, we have to think about the curriculum. Then we, we think about these three stages and again we revise it. Every three, two years or three years, we revise the curriculum according to these three areas. And then we can give best our trainings, good trainings to the industry according to what they are expecting 
Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Mr. Anuradate and Ruba Singh for presenting their speech. Dear audience, now I would like to request Mr. Ko Kosenga Agustin to present this paper. Mr. Kosenga. Okay, now. And therefore, partner of, of course. Another is uh, Ms. Akle. Ms. Claire. Lao Kenyu, Media and Development Career Coordinator, Department of Education, Papua New Guinea. Thank you, uh, Chair, and the okay. facilitator for granting us this opportunity to present our paper for our country, Papua New Guinea. Okay. Just a brief of my country and my counterpart. Papua New Guinea is a developing nation which is experiencing a lot of development from the natural gas and oil that is being extracted. And with that, we are facing a lot of challenges in training our students to be the global, competitive, uh, global competitiveness in order to meet all these demands. So now I will ask my Counterpart to present the paper. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I'll uh, go to those that are not much time. I'll have to go to the materials. As you can see, is still for future way of the uh, conference. Uh, and even for global companies. And as our team is given for global.
workers so, so that it's in Papua New Guinea. So uh, with the current experiences that we have, uh, there is uh, really we experience this shortage of uh, these uh, skills in the country. Uh, Papua New Guinea is facing skills labor shortage, especially in the village, uh, like uh, what my colleague has mentioned. Uh, we are moving into this central uh, uh, sales and industrial group in our agricultural sector, where a lot of companies from around the world they are going into a land oil farm, Kobe, Cobra, Coco, T, all these uh, growth in bigger cities. We need uh, skilled people in that sector uh, to uh, work. And we also have uh, uh, West big area covered with forestry and we also have uh, bigger companies going into company to do logging <laughs> and this is also something that uh, we, we lack manpower skills uh, to end the list of uh, a scenario where there's uh, increased demand for labor and uh, we are from a tropical country there's a lot of uh, resources uh, from the sea where a lot of companies also, investors are also going into uh, get those resources like pizza. We have abundance of uh, tuna fish. And uh, we have lots of companies going into do this one, do business in there. And we also have the immense cultural, the uh, culture that we have in public, we have more than 800 languages. And when you look at 800 languages, each of these languages, they have their own culture, way of tradition, and so on. So, I approach a lot of tourists from around the world to go into Papua New Guinea. And there's a tourism uh, boom in there as well where uh, we need experts, uh, people, skilled people to uh, wait in hotels, uh, do a guide and all this one. And we really need uh, people to uh, do all those things. So there is actually there's a skill shortage in our country. And uh, when you look at the uh, second slide, To address all these things, uh, the education department, uh, for Papua New Guinea, the education department, uh, especially Tibet, uh, we, Tibet uh, directly, uh, we have come with this uh, uh, management, uh, special management plan, which is uh, designed for 2011 to 2020. And we, know we have eight of them. It very, very, very well uh, explains how uh, this uh, skill knowledge, uh, this experience in the country, is going to be addressed. And this, however, we are working uh, in line with this uh, management plan and uh, looking at our different institutions. Uh, this one. We, when we look at the number of uh, uh, institutions that we have in there, we have only 10 uh, community colleges huh? who are only imparting skill knowledge uh, to the uh, students. We have uh, 132. Uh, we have those schools. And when you come up the RSC, up the line, you can see that we have only two business colleges. And we have only seven technical colleges and only one polytechnical institute, which cannot accommodate this one. When you compare this one with the demand that we have in there, this cannot supply our, our skilled workers to meet those needs that we have with a mental skill shortage. So, uh, what, we, uh, what the government of Papua New Guinea is doing under the education department is uh, as, uh, uh, as in that area. What we are doing is we are doing uh, uh, we are designing curriculum. Uh, there is we are moving away from traditional based curriculum, uh, traditional way of uh, learning, and moving on to uh, community based training and assessment, which I uh, know. Most of the asset budget countries are now are moving away from the traditional base of many and going into a CPTNA, which we are also, we have, uh, we have actually started in 2000, uh, 2011, and it's, it's going to take the ninth year, and we have this in place. And we have a uh, we also have a linkage, uh, training uh, to certifications and uniform framework based on uh, this. So these are the quality assurance. We have this quality assurance in place to control and monitor those trends that we have. Uh, 
the Development and Skill Development for uh, Next slide. Due to 
they are in a way in and create a scope for access to education and skill development program situation and analyzing the current low participation rates of these people in employment and mission work can be mitigated by offering for the range of traditional and non traditional education and skill training programs that could improve their quality. Problem statement. One of the major problems for this underrepresented group for limited access to skill development program is due to their financial vulnerability and lack of funds to cover the cost of attending education and skill development programs. Purpose of the study. Given such a pre-professional education at NTBQF, they will want skill training followed by industrial apprenticeship and hence creating the scope for self-employment through strengthening their capacity to increase competitiveness with personal training to establish their own business. It will also enhance their ability to adapt to the changing technology and labor market by improving productivity and profitability of their enterprises. Uh, <clears throat> limitation of the study. Though it is a small scale exploratory nature of the study, where appropriate possible findings of this issue would benefit from further investigation and possible opportunities for the research to prove that gap. <clears throat> this is standard. This is a three months long small scale exploratory nature of the study where appropriate possible findings where both primary and secondary data were used for analysis findings and recommendations. <coughs> my conceptual framework of my the conceptual uh, framework of my research is uh, keep a set of pre-professional education and individual level on skill training followed by industrial apprenticeship and then industrial apprenticeship hence uh, creating the scope for self-employment and creating the scope of self-employment and enterprise development. Review of the literature. Skill development is a full range of formal and non-formal vocational technical skills based on education training for employment and self-employment. <coughs> self-employment is a situation in which individual works for himself instead of working for an employer uh, uh, and earns his income through conducting profitable operations from the trade from a trade or business that he operates directly. Enterprise development program is an innovative model uh, <coughs> that provides support to entrepreneurs in some of the world poorest countries to help them create skill while sustainable business. My business person and hypothesis are is there any relationship between TV sector, sector pre professional education and skill training along with apprenticeship and self employment? Is there any relationship between uh, TV sector pre professional education and skill training along with apprenticeship and enterprise development? And is there any relationship between TV sector pre professional education and skill training along with apprenticeship, self employment, and enterprise development? My research hypothesis are, is there any relationship to a sector to vocational education and skill training and with apprenticeship and self-employment for self-employment? Uh, there is a relationship between a sector to vocational education and skill training and with apprenticeship self-employment. There is a relationship between a sector to vocational education, skill training and with apprenticeship enterprise development. <coughs> there is a relationship between a uh, sector Pre-vocational education and skill training and only apprenticeship and self-employment and enterprise development. Methodology. This is a this is a small scale and uh, explorative research under the research question of role of teacher sector to work education and skill training for self-employment and hence enterprise development. Uh, <coughs> uh, the representative of the underrepresented group on uh, unemployed women and women adolescents in a low level of skill. For the research, two songs of Pongi and CC uh, have been selected where there were 100 households. For this research, simple random sampling technique 
was employed to the sample side of our uh, individual for population side risk market. Two uh, focus group discussion have been conducted where <coughs> 40 key informants were selected randomly. Out of these 40 key informants, uh, there were 10 people who have low level of education and skill, 50 non work equipment, 10 adolescents, and 5 uh, findings. We summarize here the main findings from the research is that we can adopt implement different programs to facilitate the sector uh, free vocational education in PBQ and level on skill training certification followed by industrial apprenticeship and then job placement program for the unskilled unemployed people with a strategy to support them by creating a scope for self-employment and enterprise development. Recommendation. The research suggested the importance of following policies, specified modules for pre-vocational education for the people with no literacy and diversity, <coughs> creating more scope for pre-vocational education and skill training, increasing the number of pre-vocational education and skill training in institutions, support them to reduce their financial vulnerability Thank you. 
someone, someone's email, email is not available. It's all that. It's all that. It's all that. Yes, uh, my name is Peter Dhan, uh, from Bangladesh. My question, this is a very good suggestion from all the foreigners also, that is even the paranormal competitiveness. Uh, yes. For this occasion, we have to start with a question. Uh, technically, we are not in sufficient expert in deep section. That means we have started, we have started for, uh, for, for the technology development deep section. But actually, we have also in the field maximum, uh, maximum technicians and professionalists are not sufficient skilled. This is why we are not developed, we are not developing our country, our health and other social sector. So how can we filled up by this problem? Presentations uh, due to time, we 
need to honor the, uh, the uh, organization time, so we need to uh, cut the presentation to end it. So, so I apologize on behalf of the uh, organizer. In any case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, thank you for these sessions, for attending these sessions. If you cannot remember, if you cannot remember anything that the four presentations has shared with us, I give you a method to remember. Four C's, the letter C's, A, B, C, C. The first presenter shared with us, the first presenter shared with us, first C, challenges. Challenges. Challenges that Zaka, PTE perspective, has been, is facing. But challenges must be taken positively. Without challenge, without challenges, nation cannot progress. People cannot progress. So challenges are good. And for that, DTE and the presentations has uh, shared with us the plan, the, the plan to tackle, the plan to progress based on these challenges. The second presenter, I would use another C, connections. Connections. The second presenter, the test, <laughs> shared with us the linkages between industry and schools or institutions. That, in fact, is connections. They are sharing with us the key to connect supply and demand. And I think that is a very, very important uh, element in defense education. Defense must stay connected with the industry. And if any of you are from the industry, please, you must stay connected with the institutions because the institution's product, the graduate, is your, is your sources of uh, manpower. So your second C would be connections. The third C, if I may, I will use the term, I will use the C for capital, human capital. You are talking about human capital development using different platforms how do you develop your human capital to reach industry demand? So I will use the word capital. The last presenter, though she presented a research, a simple research study, but I will use the C curriculum. Curriculum. Because what her recommendation eventually shows that there is a link between apprenticeships as well as uh, employability. And how do you translate this into some tools? That means, how do you translate this? How do you equip the student with this tool? It has to go into the curriculum. And I must commend you for a wonderful study. So ladies and gentlemen, if you really can't remember anything, of course you can remember, they are wonderful presenter. But I will give it to you four C to sum it up. The first C, if you can recall, is challenges. The second C, connections. The third C, capital. The last C is curriculum. So with that, once again, can we put our hands together to thank our wonderful panel of speakers.